We're back aboard DFDS Zelandia Seaways for our fifth and final episode in our series covering this important and busy link between Felixstowe and Rotterdam. That's Rotterdam now astern as the crew continue with their schedule of deck work. Everything has to be kept up to date equipment checked over and in working order, regardless of how infrequently it's used. It has to be working and ready for operation. As we move away from the busy approaches to Rotterdam, the captain leaves the ship in the hands of one of the officers, but he's still available if needed. Yes, I like it and I'm still learning every day. Oh, I start sailing three years ago. Right. I start uh, working by course on Suez, on sister ship. Right. Then I get promotion I am on Zelandia. And was that straight from college? From school or? Uh, no, I was looking for a job for a long time. Like, right. Maybe something like two years. But if I start then the it goes pretty fast. Right. right. Now I am officer. What do you have? Three months on and three months off? Six or? weeks and six weeks. Six weeks each way. So you have six weeks on, six weeks off? Yes. That's quite nice, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six weeks at home is really nice. Then yeah. you can do a lot of things. Zelandia Seaways and Suezia Seaways average around 18 knots on this route. That's just under 21 miles an hour. But both ships can sail at 21 and a half knots flat out, which is just less than 25 miles an hour. But they have to achieve sensible fuel economy, and going faster means using much more fuel on each voyage. On ships like this, the captain's job isn't just about sailing the ship from port to port. He has to manage the whole operation, ensuring that she keeps as close as possible to schedule. The ship's time at the ramp is also carefully planned, just sufficient to allow a full load of trucks and trailers to be unloaded and a new load to be put aboard. It's a complex equation. This is the North Shipwash Boy. It leads us into the northern approaches of the port of Felixstowe, where we run parallel to the coast until we reach the main shipping channel. But now there's a change. The engines have slowed down, the ship has slowed down, and it's time to go onto the bridge and see what's happening. So now we're down to six knots because we're waiting. Outbound traffic from Felix, though, one of the big Maersk. These supersized container vessels are actually leaving right now, and they require a clear run, as we call it, around the beach end, mm -hmm. because they don't like to go to other ships in the corner, and it's actually understandable. Because the channel is very narrow, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's narrow when you're having a ship of 400 meters. We are now proceeding in, the, as I say, very slowly, and then mm -hmm. once we pass them, we will speed up a little bit, but there's speed limitations inside right. the port anyway, mm -hmm. so uh, it will not affect that much. It's only it will affect the amount of time we have in the harbour for Good. discharging and loading. And that can cause a delay in departure. And we will have to deal with that the rest of the week. You have to because make up the speed. Yeah, if we can. Yeah. Uh, and if we are making up speed, of course, we are increasing the consumption of fuel. Because that's one of the things that's got to be always in your mind these days, isn't it? it fuel is, consumption. It is. It's a huge uh, deal with all companies these days, and also in DFGS we've been. And we're still looking for savings mm. here and there and everywhere, mm. especially the engine department are in, like uh, inventing stuff all the time to improve yeah. and yeah. how we can save mm. and squeeze more out of each uh, drop of oil. So, uh, For what seems like a long time, nothing much seems to happen. Then, eventually, we can see the shape of an ultra-large container ship on the horizon. It's the Morton Maersk, 
or 195,000 tons of her, 399 metres long and 60 metres wide, heading out of her berth. It feels like a long wait as she heads towards us, but after she rounds the beach end turn, she comes on surprisingly quickly. Even as Morton Maersk is coming out and we're about to go in, the next massive container ship is starting her journey in towards the port from the sunk deep water anchorage. With Morton Maersk safely out of the way, Selandia Seaways can move along a bit. She can easily pass by smaller ships in the channel, but the modern sea monsters are a bit daunting. The view of the port from the ship's bridge as she comes in can be surprising. You're much higher than usual, and looking downwards certainly alters your perspective. This is the new extension to Felix Doe's Berth 8 and 9 complex, 190 metres of additional quay, which will enable this area to handle two 400 metre long ships at the same time. It's due for completion later in 2015. Now it's that twice a day moment that Captain Stevenson says makes his job the most interesting. That's putting the 200 metre long Selandia Seaways into place alongside the quay, stern on to the ramp. The crew are in position, so let's see it happen.
Selandia Siwa is docked around 50 minutes late against her scheduled time, but thanks to the efforts of the dockers and the crew, left just 35 minutes late. With a little luck, she'll be able to get back onto her timetable in a day or two, with a minimum in extra cost on the fuel bill. And that's the end of our series, filmed aboard DFDS Suecia Seaways and Selandia Seaways by kind permission of DFDS Seaways and with the help and support of the masters and crews of both ships and the DFDS terminal staff at Felixstowe in Rotterdam. There will be more short clips online filmed on this trip over coming weeks showing more aspects of the route and ship handling in more detail. Thanks for watching. Keep up to date with Shipping TV for more from the world of ships and shipping.